This is Downtown Lowdown with Downtown Halifax Business Commission. Welcome to Downtown Lowdown with Downtown Halifax Business Commission. This is where you can find out all you need or want to know about Downtown Halifax. I'm Alana McDonald Mills, Director of Marketing. And I'm Ivy Ho, Director of Communications. We are your hosts for Downtown Lowdown. This is our eighth special COVID-19 episode, and we're recording this via video conferencing as we are still working remotely from our homes during this pandemic. We apologize in advance for any issues with the sound quality. We're going to start this episode with a conversation with Erica Pellerin, the Vice President, Marketing and Visitor Experience at Discover Halifax. Erica will be telling us how Discover Halifax has pivoted their marketing initiatives to adjust to the COVID-19 pandemic. Paul McKinnon, the CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission, will then give us an update on the NS Business Labor Economic Coalition and on DHBC's latest advocacy efforts. We'll also give a quick review of what businesses are up to since the state of emergency was declared back in March, and we'll finish with what Downtown Halifax businesses are doing for Mother's Day. And this episode is being recorded on Monday, May 4th. The pandemic situation is changing daily with changes to programs and also to restrictions happening regularly. To keep up to date, you can visit downtownhalifax.ca slash COVID-19 or visit novascotia.ca slash coronavirus. We'll start a discussion with Erica Pellerin, Vice President, Marketing and Visitor Experience at Discover Halifax. Today, we were welcoming Erica Pellerin back to Downtown Lowdown. Erica is Vice President of Marketing and Visitor Experience with Discover Halifax. Discover Halifax is the regional destination marketing organization for Halifax Regional Municipality. Its goal is to promote Halifax as a destination of choice for leisure and business travelers. Erica is going to share with us how Discover Halifax has pivoted their marketing strategies during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So, Erica, thank you so much for joining us for Downtown Lowdown today. Um, first of all, how is your family doing? How are you and your family doing in this new normal of working remotely and physical distancing? How's your stress level? You know what? We're we're doing pretty well. Um, my husband yeah. and I are both working from home. So, I mean, obviously, we feel very fortunate to do so. But we have uh, two small children, five and eight. So I think we're all adapting to, you know, new new routines, homeschooling. Mm-hmm. balancing work and trying to spend time with them. But overall, I think we're doing okay, actually. Good, good. I know it's stressful. I have a five-year-old at home as well. So uh, trying to work from home is always challenging. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned in the intro, Discover Halifax is the destination marketing organization of HRM. Uh, what would you have been doing this time last year? Or last year at this time, I mean, we'd be in the complete thick of it. This is go time in the tourism world. So we would have probably just have launched our major summer tourism campaign. We'd be in the process of launching our attractions campaign. Cruise season would have started by this time. So we would have finished our walking map. Um, We'd probably be reaching out to members and businesses to see what they're working on and how we can promote and support them. So this would have been, you know, I would say this time of year is, is our very busiest time in the tourism world. Yeah. Yeah. And so how have you been um, able to pivot or, or shift your marketing efforts? I know that you're still busy, you're still marketing, yeah. but in a very different way. How has it changed? Yeah. So it, it's been very interesting because I think like many people, we shut everything down. You know, all of our plans, all of our marketing, we reached out to our agencies and stopped everything immediately. Um, Then, of course, we immediately shifted, like many, to using our channels to help support getting COVID-19 information out, um, you know, to the public and to businesses and our members. Um, But then very quickly after that, we shifted to completely rewriting our marketing strategies and plans. We basically threw out everything we had before and um, tried to figure out where do we go from here? And I think the, the most challenging part is that you, no one really knows. No one knows what this is going to look like. I mean, as the other provinces start to roll out a little bit ahead of us, we're starting to get a feel for how this might look. But it's going to be really tricky for us all to know when the time is right to actually start marketing again. And, and that's the biggest challenge is that we have to, however we do this, do it carefully, do it slowly, do it gradually um, so that we don't hurt the reputation of this awesome destination that we have. Yeah, before we get into the recovery stage of, you know, planning, um, can you tell us about a couple of your marketing campaigns that you've been, that uh, Discover Halifax has initiated? 
Yeah. So one of the first things that we wanted to do was keep the destination top of mind. So we don't want to have to restart that relationship that we have with consumers. We want them to still be thinking about Halifax, but at the same time, we have to do it in a way that puts safety first. I mean, we want to ensure that people remain safe. So early on with a a whole bunch of our partners, and you guys were involved in this, so thank you so much, we launched a a program called Dine and Stay Home, um, which is really about trying to promote the restaurants that are ordering takeout and delivery and really giving them promotion so everyone knows who they are and, and how to go about that. And then because that was quite successful, we launched a similar program called Shop and Stay Home. Um, so that really is the same idea, only trying to support local retailers that are still open. And so we launched that last week, and now we're heading into a program um, that we're working on right now called See and Stay Home, which is really about trying to showcase the beauty of Halifax from the safety of your home. So a, a real shift. I mean, we're still trying to talk about Halifax, but now in a way that's that's safety, safety first. So a big shift for us. All right. Can you give us uh, a few examples of the uh, See and Stay Home uh, events or programs? Yeah. So the first group that we reached out to was the attractions partners that we would have worked with last year. So an example of that, um, actually a good one, is the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. They did a Maud Lewis virtual tour. Mm-hmm. It's, the per- it's the perfect way for both locals and visitors to see um, that wonderful, wonderful exhibit, but from home. So we've been working with our other partners to say, you know, who has virtual tours, who has virtual events, even using content to be able to show off our destination, but from home. And I think, too, you know, one of the things you go, well, how long does the, you know, stay home orders last? The way we think about this is that it's actually an investment in the future because even when restrictions come off, it's still going to be very gradual. And there are going to be people who are afraid to leave their house or afraid to maybe visit some of these different accommodate or different attractions. So for us, it really is thinking about what this could look like and evolve over time, knowing that there's going to be a time and a long time probably when some people don't feel comfortable going out. Yeah, I think uh, consumer confidence will have to be built up again in a major way after this is over. Well, yeah, I was going to say when you have, you know, I don't know if we're on seven or eight weeks since the, the lockdown started, but when you hear that message constantly of stay home, stay home, stay home, of course it's going to take time for mm-hmm. people to feel safe going out. So for us, it's about how do we continue that relationship while that happens. Right. And with the AGNS as your example, that is a great example because we were talking to Colin Stinson in a, a recent meeting and he said they were getting amazing engagement uh, with the Maude Lewis tour, virtual tour, uh, all their programs with the AGNS. So it is an investment. They can actually run with us even after this pandemic is over. So yeah. that's great. Uh, so you mentioned a bit about the recovery stage of, you know, when, um, Hopefully when this is over and we're getting back to our um, usual marketing of Halifax as a destination, but, you know, things are uncertain. Reopening dates are uncertain at this point. Um, How are you planning for that recovery stage as Destination Halifax? So, again, because no one has a, a crystal ball, basically the best way to go at it for us at least is scenario planning. So, you know, we have this phase two, which is all about how we will restart our marketing in order to support the local economy and then tourism when the time is right. And there's multiple scenarios underneath that. So for example, when do you start? When is it, when is it appropriate to start? Is it summer? Is it fall? Is it winter? Um, what type of experiences are people going to be looking for? Is it now going to be more of the wide open spaces? Um, what type of consumers might be ready to venture out first. So there's just so many questions and scenarios that we're looking at. Um, and, and really the, the way that we're trying to approach that is to build a marketing campaign that's flexible enough to adapt underneath that. So it really is about scenario planning and trying to build flexibility into our campaigns. Right. Yeah, because it is almost like a moving target because mm-hmm. when th- if things open up in July, it's going to look very different from a, an October opening instead. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's challenging to be planning with a, <laughs> a reopening date that is so uncertain. Yeah. Uh, 
Discover Halifax has a membership program. So would you be able to talk about that a little bit in terms of how membership to Discover Halifax is helping business uh, during this time of crisis? Yes, I think there's a few ways that we're trying to help our members and in even the broader business community. So um, our president and CEO, Ross Jefferson, sits on several different committees that are aimed at advocating and supporting small businesses. So putting their their needs first. Um, We have a a full sales team who is responsible for the meetings and conventions business. So they've been hard at work trying to rebook meetings and conferences that were canceled but then also to go after potential business that's, you know, one to three years out because, you know, that work is actually still happening. And then um, one of the things that we announced actually just this past Thursday is um, for any of our members who haven't paid us yet for the 2020 fiscal year, we're actually going to give them a complimentary membership. And if you've already paid us, we're going to give you a credit towards your 2021 membership. Oh, that will help businesses quite a bit I think yeah yeah I mean when they're closed right now yeah, for exactly. us, it doesn't make sense to to charge them but we also want to support them the best we can so mm-hmm. that's kind of the key things that we're doing okay uh, so is there anything else you'd like to add um, the only thing that I, I can think of and this is really hard because we're all in this kind of crisis mode and we're all in trying to figure out how to survive and, and what's next but I think for those of us that can try to figure out what the new normal is going to look like, it, it really is the best for us all. So, you know, one of the, the new trends or one of the trends that we see emerging a lot is what is cleaning protocols or cleanliness? Like that is going to be so important in the new world. So that's just one example. But I think for any of us who can try to get out ahead and try to figure out what the new normal looks like, the better off, you know, we're all going to be as a whole together. So not easy, but (laughs) something at least that we're trying to look at. I think for both of our organizations, Discover Halifax and Downtown Halifax Business Commission, it's our part of our role will be to help businesses prepare for that reopening uh, in terms of staying safe and making sure that their clients and customers are safe as well. Um, And on top of, you know, staff. So, yeah. Yes. We have a a long road ahead of us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that we do. I guess I guess the other thing to your point is be patient because you're right. It is it is a while. We're we're in this for the long haul. Yeah. So thank you so much, Erica, for being part of uh, Downtown Lowdown today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We were talking to Erica Pellerin, Vice President, Marketing and Visitor Experience with Discover Halifax. You can learn more about Discover Halifax at discoverhalifaxns.com or follow at Discover Halifax on Facebook and Instagram. Now we have Paul McKinnon, CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission. He is going to give us an update on the Nova Scotia Business Labor Economic Coalition and a DHBC's advocacy efforts. So, Paul, what do you have for us? Well, first of all, Ivy, it's great to be back here with you again this week. Uh, this is fun. We do this every Monday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's our new routine. <laughs> now, when when things go back to normal, will we still do weekly podcasts? I think that the I think our fans will want this. Will want our regular banter. We have fans. <laughs> yes, yes, my mother listens to this. Uh, hopefully your mom does as well. My brother does. Your brother, All okay, good. In Ontario, yep. Oh, good, <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah, so on to the update. So uh, we do uh, calls with the Nova Scotia Business Labor Economic Coalition three times a week, uh, as you know, because you're on them. Um, so there wasn't really a whole lot uh, in terms of new government program announcements today. Uh, a lot of the, the programs that have already been announced are, are in the process of being rolled out. Um, but we did get a presentation today from Deputy Minister Bernie Miller about Nova Scotia's reopening plan. So there's been a, a bit of chatter, uh, certainly in social media, about the fact that other provinces uh, have released, you know, kind of their reopening the economy plans, but Nova Scotia hasn't yet. Uh, but uh, but the government is uh, working on that right now, and we are expecting a, a full presentation uh, next week, uh, and that will probably be given by Dr. Strang and uh, Dr. Gaynor Watson Creed. So we're looking forward to that. But uh, but Bernie was able to give us a little bit of a preview of that plan today. Uh, not a whole lot of details, but just the, the fact that it's being worked on, it's coming, and it's like like I think the other provincial plans uh, that we've seen across Canada. There, it, it's going to be a phased approach. 
uh, and when the phases happen aren't necessarily tied to specific dates, but they're more or less tied to kind of what the situation looks like, right? So uh, as, as Bernie described it today, it's it's a five-phase plan, uh, which isn't really true because we're in phase zero at the moment. So it's really a six-phase plan, I guess. But, um, but the first phase will begin when we have either no or very few new cases uh, of COVID-19 in Nova Scotia, and that'll kind of kick off phase one, and then we'll there'll be outcomes that we have to achieve to, to go move on to phase two and, and so forth. Uh, and ultimately getting to the point where uh, I, I presume that phase five occurs only when there's a vaccine, you know, and the, and the threat of COVID-19 is, is virtually eliminated. So that will be coming next week. So we are looking forward to getting more details around that. Uh, but it will cover topics uh, such as, you know, when certain types of businesses can open, what sort of rules they'll have to be following. And we're seeing examples of this, again, from other provinces. There's there's some good resources available online about, you know, here's ways that restaurants can operate, you know, in the era of social distancing. Here's ways that retailers can operate. Um, uh, it was brought up one of the, the biggest challenges that we'll see in terms of uh, businesses downtown will be you know real kind of personal service businesses so retailers where you are used to going and say and trying on clothes you know or hairdressers or massage therapists uh it'll be a real challenge um uh, for those kinds of businesses and so uh it'll be interesting to see what you know where in the where in the plan they uh they can reopen uh, certainly we anticipate that that most retail and most restaurant will be reopening will be able to reopen fairly soon in fact most of them can be open now uh as long as they're following the, the proper rules but this will give a bit more guidance uh, so we're looking forward to seeing that plan. Uh, we, we think it'll be happening uh, uh, next Monday, um, which will be Monday the 11th, I guess. Uh, but that hasn't been announced yet. We'll, we'll hear maybe by the time the, the podcast airs, we'll have a, a more solid date on that. Okay. Yeah. Once we get that, we'll uh, give a full report in our next podcast. Yes. Something for, for people to tune in for, like your brother. Mm-hmm. Our yeah. fans can tune in for that. <laughs> exactly. All of our fans. Um, so just a couple of other updates. I mean, there, there's been a lot of, of announcements around programs, as I mentioned. Uh, certainly one of the ones that, that we were pushing for quite actively as, as Downtown Halifax Business Commission and our partners was uh, rent, the Rent Assistance Program. Um, so it's the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program, uh, by which uh, a landlord can receive up to 75% of the rent that they're owned by their tenant. The tenant themselves can get 50% of the rent covered. Uh, by government and 25% covered by their landlord. Uh, there was a lot of, of hope for this plan, and, and there still is. Um, we we're very excited about it. Uh, the, the, the early challenge that we've been hearing, certainly from a lot of our members, and from, frankly from, from tenants across the country, is that uh, there's quite a few landlords that, that aren't really very excited about this program, are, are, are indicating they don't want to participate in it. You know, Their expectation is that they still want to get 100% of the rent, not 75% uh, over April, May, and June. So there's still some kinks to work out. Um, I know that in talking with with our MP and, and certainly other MPs uh, across the country that um, you know, they're hearing this a lot from, from business members. So we anticipate there'll be some tweaks to that program, uh, both tweaks to the program as well as perhaps uh, maybe a stronger message from the federal government about, you know, the need for kind of everyone to share in the in the burden uh, of, of ensuring that our Main Street businesses survive. So I think it's fair to say at this point the program hasn't uh, worked as well as as certainly government had hoped and certainly that, that we had hoped. Uh, but it is it is still a good program and our anticipation is that, that maybe there'll be some tweaks and, and that will uh, uh, that will still roll out in a much more successful way. So we continue to advocate for that. The other piece that's uh, that's happening and is there's a number of economic recovery plans that are happening. So the, the province's plan uh, that we'll hear about next week is really more about the, the rules and regulations about what reopening looks like. Uh, but we know, for instance, at the city level, the Halifax Partnership has been tasked with uh, creating an economic recovery plan for the city. Uh, there is provincial work happening on that as well. And there is a, are a number of things happening federally. Uh, one of those things is there's an organization called the Canadian Urban Institute, uh, which really is it's an urban-based think tank. Uh, they're based out of Toronto. They have a national and international focus, uh, frankly. Uh, and they were originally approached uh, by the City of Toronto to help lead their economic recovery efforts. Uh, but what CUI has done is they broadened the tent uh, with, with the permission of, of the City of Toronto to look at you know, a framework uh, for a Main Street-based recovery plan for all of Canada. Uh, so they put together a framework. They're going to be launching a website uh, this week, I believe, uh, and we'll, we'll share that information through our social media when that's confirmed and, and is live. Um, but really, it's it's making the case that, you know, unless our, our main streets are, you know, are brought back to life, are, are vibrant uh, as, and are invested in appropriately with the recovery effort, uh, that a lot of the other things that we may try won't be necessarily effective. We'll, we'll still seem like we're closed. The economy will still seem depressed, you know, if our main streets are empty. 
So this has to be a real focus, we, we believe, uh, across the country. Um, and there has to be provisions, you know, for Main Street recovery in a federal program, in provincial programs, and in city programs. So we're doing some work with CUI as well as uh, our, our kind of our parent um, association, uh, International Downtown Association Canada, uh, working with CUI. And there's a whole bunch of partners that are involved in this. So we're excited to see what, what will come out of this. Uh, and our other hope is that this will influence uh, infrastructure investments that the federal government will be making uh, as part of their recovery program as well. So. Uh, so that's the Bring Back Main Street uh, plan. We're, we're looking forward to some more information on that. Uh, and to finally, at the city level, uh, one of the things that's coming before council uh, this week uh, for consideration, uh, and again, is something that we're advocating for as the business, as all the business Christians of Halifax are advocating for, as well as the Restaurant Association, uh, is waiving patio fees. So as we know, restaurants have been hit uh, very hard with this. Uh, most of them, in fact, are closed, uh, will be closed for a while, or when, when they do reopen, you know, there'll be social distancing requirements that happen, so that will significantly reduce their capacity. Um, one of the things that, that brings downtown Halifax alive, of course, every year are the downtown patios, and so we are anticipating that, that patios will be allowed uh, at some point over the course of the summer. Uh, in fact, that will may even seem like a, a much more comfortable, safer option for people as they start dining out again. Uh, it'll increase the capacity of the restaurants. It'll just bring our downtown streets alive. Uh, as, as the mayor of Halifax recently said, it, it really will be good for the morale of the city. And so one of the things that we've asked for is for the city to waive the permit fees for the patios. Uh, every year, if you put out a patio, you've got to pay a permit fee to the city. Uh, it's not a, it's not a ton of money. It, it's a significant amount for a restaurant. Of course, these restaurants, especially that have been hit so hard. Um, so, uh, I know a motion is being brought forward to council this week, uh, to waive those fees for this summer. Uh, and we are hearing a good indication from a number of councillors that they, in fact, support this. So, fingers crossed on Thursday, council will make the decision, uh, to waive those fees, which will just take, you know, again, a little bit of the burden off the patios financially, uh, and hopefully get those, get those patios up and running and, and bring you downtown back live. So those are my main updates, I guess, uh, for this week. Um, hopefully everyone's uh, staying well, staying safe, and uh, certainly we're, we're excited to, you know, I th- it's, this week it kind of feels like we're a little bit over the hump, uh, and it's just, it just feels a bit more realistic that uh, the things will be at least starting to get more back towards the way they were before. But, um, again, it, it's not going to go back to the way things were at the beginning of March. It is going to be a slow recovery, uh, but it will be exciting to see some things, you know, Moving forward and, and some and some things opening up again. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully by this time next week we'll uh, we'll see even more signs of life and, and spring in downtown Halifax. Yeah, I mean especially with loosening some of the restrictions that were announced uh, this past week, uh, it does seem like that we're over the hump. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed. We, yes, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, thanks, Paul. Great, thank you. And that was Paul McKinnon, CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission. He was giving us some updates from the Nova Scotia Business Labor Economic Coalition and some of uh, DHBC's advocacy efforts. Downtown Halifax Business Commission is committed to providing the latest information to DHBC members to help business through these uncertain times. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, DHBC will be following the directives of the Nova Scotia Health Authority and will be asking businesses in downtown Halifax to do the same. We all have the responsibility to do our part in stopping the spread of the virus. DHBC has three resource pages for businesses and for the public. For the main COVID-19 business resource page, visit downtownhalifax.ca slash COVID-19. For what's open in downtown Halifax, visit downtownhalifax.ca slash open. To find out how businesses are staying connected to the community, customers, and clients, go to downtownhalifax.ca slash connect. On March 22nd, 2020, the province of Nova Scotia declared a state of emergency. The Nova Scotia government has extended the state of emergency to May 17th. Police are authorized to enforce orders under the Protection Act related to the isolation and social distancing and can issue summary offense tickets to people not adhering to those orders. We'd like to reiterate the measures the province will be enforcing. There are to be no gatherings of more than five people any workplace or business that is not deemed essential or not already required to be closed can remain open as long as a two meter or six foot distance can be maintained. Police are authorized to enforce orders under the Health Protection Act. If Nova Scotians and businesses do not practice social distancing and self-isolation, they will face fines of $1,000 for individuals and $7,500 for businesses. Multiple fines can be given each day if an individual or business fails to comply. Police can also enforce offenses under the Emergency Management Act. For example, fines for charging higher than market prices for goods and services. To view a list of businesses that are temporarily closed or events that are canceled or postponed, go to downtownhalifax.ca slash closed. 
The province has eased some restrictions. A few of the recently reopened outdoor spaces include provincial and municipal parks. They are now open, but people are still required to adhere to the two-meter physical distancing with those outside of their household. Playgrounds remain closed. For full notices and other recently lifted restrictions from the Nova Scotia government, go to novascotia.ca slash coronavirus slash hashtag alerts. As always, DHVC is asking the public to help support businesses in downtown Halifax if you can, while staying safe and adhering to provincial public health orders by doing the following. Order takeout via phone or online as much as you normally would or more if you are financially able to. Many restaurants are offering discounts on takeout. Many restaurants are offering free delivery. Purchase gift cards now to use later. Most retailers have an online retail store. Shop online whenever possible. Some retailers are offering free delivery. Some businesses are offering online classes or workshops to remain connected to the community. Again, to view what's open in downtown Halifax, visit downtownhalifax.ca slash open. These were just some of the highlights of the changes and new measures that may affect businesses, visitors, or workers in downtown Halifax. Also, I'd like to take this moment to remind listeners that we are recording this episode on Monday, May 4th, 2020. Before we get into uh, what's new with business, I'd like to... Uh, tell our listeners about a free members webinar uh, called Digital Transformation for Survival. So this is open to any of the businesses in downtown Halifax. Uh, An email should have gone out to the members in downtown Halifax regarding this uh, webinar. If you have not received that email and would like to uh, take part in this webinar, just email luke at downtownhalifax.ca. Again, that's L-U-K-E at downtownhalifax.ca. So this webinar is happening on Wednesday, May 6th from 10.30 to 12 noon, and it's a 90-minute Zoom webinar, so pre-registration is required. Uh, It is a panel of uh, panel discussion with twists and bits, Uh, so we have Ian Bazanson, Managing Director, Tracy Maunder, Creative Director, Molly Seewald, Digital Project Manager, uh, who will be discussing um, how many of the businesses and companies around the world uh, are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, how they have been forced or have uh, fast-tracked digital transformation. In this session, a panel of experts from Twist and Bits, one of the region's largest direct to execution marketing agencies will discuss ways to get up and running online or to better prepare an existing digital presence. They will also share examples of clever techniques they have encountered in the past two months that are allowing local businesses to continue serving their clientele. The session will be split between a presentation and discussion and a Q&A period. As a bonus, one of the downtown Halifax businesses that attends the, the webinar will win a free year of Squarespace or Shopify base costs to a maximum of $250. So again, if you have not received an, an invite email uh, regarding this uh, webinar, just email luke at downtownhalifax.ca. So now we have Alana who will give us an update on what's new with businesses in downtown Halifax. Hi everyone, Mother's Day is coming up. It is on May 10th this year, so less than a week away. I am going to talk about what some downtown Halifax businesses are doing for Mother's Day and how you can still make it a special day for the mothers in your life, even during this time of physical distancing. But first, we have quite a few updates to our What's Open page, so I'm going to start with a quick update on some businesses that are now open or open online for business. You can view our full list at downtownhalifax.ca slash open. First, Biscuit General Store is now doing contactless pickups and local deliveries. You can shop by browsing their Facebook and Instagram pages. Their handle on Facebook is at Biscuit General Store. And on Instagram, it is at Biscuit General. Just DM them with your order or for more information. Two Doors Down is now open for curbside pickups. You can order their famous burgers, their popular appetizers, homemade desserts, and take and bake family meals. Visit their website for the full menu and for ordering and payment process. Their website is go2doorsdown.com. The Bitter End and the Loose Cannon are now offering grocery package service. You can choose from one of their packages, which are featured on their websites. Order by Thursday evening for pickup or delivery on Fridays and Saturdays. You can visit bitterend.ca or theloosecannon.ca for more information and order details. Tidehouse Brewing is now offering contact-free curbside pickup from their location on Salter Street. Visit at Tidehouse Brewing Company on Facebook or at Tidehouse Brewing on Instagram for more information. Inside Optometry is open by appointment for eye emergencies, eyeglass repairs, and replacements. You can order contact lenses, eye drops, and other accessories by phone, and they have contact list pickup and shipping options available. Visit them at insideoptometry.com for more information. 
And finally, Tomavino's Ristorante, which is located in the Seaport area, is also doing takeout and delivery. Visit them at tomavinos.ca to order. Now on to Mother's Day. So as I mentioned earlier, Mother's Day is a Sunday, May 10th, and you really have no excuse to not get anything from the mothers in your life because there are so many businesses in downtown Halifax that are offering specials and promotions. Here are just a few. For flowers, Blossom Shops is still taking orders for both delivery and curbside pickup. You can visit them at blossomshops.ca to order. And the flower shop is also taking orders for local delivery. They recommend ordering early. Visit them at theflowershophalifax.ca to order. Many restaurants and cafes are also offering Mother's Day specials, including the Westin. They have Mother's Day to go, which is an oven-ready heat-and-eat meal for two for contactless curbside pickup. The cost ranges from $79 plus tax to $83 plus tax, depending on what you order. Visit at WestonNS on Instagram for more details. Julep Kitchen and Cocktails is offering chef-made lobster dinners for Mother's Day. Each dinner is $28 plus tax. You can order by visiting julepbarrington.com. The Old Apothecary has teamed up with Bishop Cellar, World Tea House, Getaway Farms, and Juice Press to offer delicious brunch in a box. You can find out more details or you can order by visiting at TOA underscore bakery on Instagram and clicking the link in their bio. The French Fix has their online store ready to pre-order some Mother's Day goodies. They have a Mother's Day package for $35 and it includes 12 assorted macarons and two pastries of your choice. Visit lafrenchfix.ca to order. The Middle Spoon has a Mother's Day special that includes one bottle of Aphrodite's Weakness, one slice of chocolate torte, and a $30 gift gift card to be used at a later date for $49. Visit at the Middle Spoon on Instagram for more info. Some other ideas include Inkwell Boutique. They have a great selection of cards, jewelry, and other locally made items that you can surprise your mom with. They're offering free curbside pickup from their shop on Brunswick Street. Visit them at inkwellboutique.ca to order. And if your mother likes art, you can order an original work of art from Argyle Fine Art. You can visit at Argyle underscore fine underscore art on Instagram for inspiration or visit their website at argylefineart.blogspot.com. That's just a small sampling of businesses offering specials for Mother's Day in downtown Halifax. There are many more that are also offering specials, or you can also always buy a gift card for your mom to your favorite downtown business to use later. For more information on what is open and open online for business in downtown Halifax, visit downtownhalifax.ca slash open. And finally, if you're looking for ways to keep connected and engaged with your downtown Halifax community in this age of physical distancing, many businesses and organizations are offering virtual programming, events, and more to keep you engaged. We have a list on our website at downtownhalifax.ca slash connect. And if you're a business or organization in downtown Halifax that is offering virtual experiences or programming, let us know by emailing communications at downtownhalifax.ca. And that's it for me this week. This concludes episode 20 of Downtown Lowdown, recorded on May 4th, 2020. For more information, visit downtownhalifax.ca. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.